Yasse vieni il mar. A tidal wave is coming. Automobiles, wagons, cars, crowd going toward the city in full speed. Hundreds of terrified men and women, the whole population of the playa, going as fast as they could to reach the center of town. The postmaster, Mr. De Passe, went to his office to close the safe. He run to get his car. By the time he got there, the water was a foot deep. He cranked his car, but just as he started to jump in, a five-foot wave covered him. A small yacht shot past him. A big truck was carried across the waters. It's an area where most of the motion is actually si you know, sideways by one another rather than sort of underneath. This is still the deepest place of the Atlantic Ocean. Here. And the question is why there are areas like that that, you know, that are so deep. And that's basically what, what drove me to actually study it. And the other issue there is, is a question that if we didn't understand and we didn't understand what the whole system was, is what is the danger from earthquakes and from tsunamis in the area? Because most of the danger should be from offshore, but if there was no maps, if there were no maps at all, I mean, how would you know what's really happening, you know? And then he came in February and March this year, and we covered all the dark blue ones. We we're going all of this way, but we didn't have enough time, and I wanted to finish this part here. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do now is we are here, and we're going to do this lines, and as much time as we'll have, if we can do a little bit more here. But this particular part of the The surface of Mars and Venus are known in much greater detail than the surface of planet Earth. In this satellite picture of the island of Puerto Rico, we can only see the topography above water. This is an image of the surface of the planet underwater, north of Puerto Rico, generated by sound waves. A sound pulse is sent under the ship, and we measure the time it takes to bounce off the seafloor and return to our receiver. If we know the speed of sound in water, we can calculate the depth to the bottom. However, the problem with this method is that when the seafloor is not flat, the first acoustic returns can come from a point on the seafloor that is not directly under the ship. In a new method called multi-beam, the ship sends and receives simultaneously 120 narrow acoustic beams at different angles, allowing us to accurately map sections of the seabed up to 10 kilometers wide. The sound beams are sent and received from this attachment under the keel of the boat. 
The data is processed aboard the ship. Delete one right there. The result okay, of the data the processing is a highly detailed, three-dimensional map of the Puerto Rico Trench and the surrounding area. On the right, the gray is Puerto Rico. The deepest sea floor is in purple. Shallow underwater areas are in red. The bottom of the Puerto Rico Trench is nearly 28,000 feet, or 8,350 meters below sea level, the deepest part of the Atlantic Ocean. If you could drop Mount Everest to the bottom of the trench, its peak would just form a hill above the water. Why is the Puerto Rico Trench the deepest place in the Atlantic Ocean? And why is Puerto Rico an island? This is a view of the trench, the island, the Lesser Antilles, Hispaniola, Cuba, the Bahamas Banks, and Florida in the upper right. The North American tectonic plate on the top right sinks into the Earth mantle under the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. This subduction, or sinking, happens at the trench, causing many earthquakes. In this detailed map of the trench that we collected on the ship, the island of Puerto Rico is shown in dark brown at the bottom of the map, and the depth of the surrounding sea is in color. The areas surrounded by the black lines on the map are limestone and reef platforms. Normally, limestone and reef form flat layers just below sea level. Here, however, one edge of the limestone area is high above sea level because Puerto Rico rose above the sea, while the other edge is 12,000 feet underwater because the trench collapsed at the same time. Near the bottom of the trench is a 450-mile tectonic fault, which we named Bunce Fault, named after Dr. Elizabeth Bunce, a pioneer woman scientist who was one of the first to study the Puerto Rico Trench more than 40 years ago. Shortly before her death, we presented Dr. Bunce with images of the fault collected by the ship. Bunce Fault is at the center. We follow it as it curves around a 10,000-foot-high undersea mountain. Bunce Fault continues to the west, crossing the hills next to the main trench. The fault then turns left or southward and splits into several smaller faults. We follow one of these faults as it creates a deep basin and then climb up toward Hispaniola and finally turn right to meet a very large and dangerous fault on land in Hispaniola. On the right is the North American tectonic plate. On the left is the Caribbean tectonic plate on which Puerto Rico sits. The North American plate is sinking under the Caribbean plate at the trench. To the left, we see low hills. These are made from sediments that were scraped off the top of the North American plate as it sunk under the Caribbean plate. To the right are steep cliffs and deep canyons. The peaks of some of the ridges stick out of the trench floor. As we are moving west, you may notice that the trench floor becomes deeper by about 3,000 feet and widens. You are now in the deepest part of the Atlantic, 28,000 feet or 8,400 meters deep. Here the entire trench floor and the area on the left collapsed. This caused submarine slides along the walls on the right side of the trench. On the horizon ahead is the site of Navidad Bank, part of the Bahamas Banks, which is only 100 feet below sea level. Ahead on the left is the site of the island of Hispaniola. As we approach the western end of the trench, we notice a low curved ridge on the right, which may be the debris from a giant submarine landslide. 
that left a 4,000-foot-high cliff further to the right. The mountains ahead of us may also have been modified by large slides. We now reach the end of the Puerto Rico Trench and the beginning of the Hispaniola Trench, which has very different characteristics. Here the trench valley is 12,000 feet more shallow and much narrower. It is the place where the much thicker Bahamas banks sink underneath Hispaniola. We are now entering the lower segment of Mona Rift. Mona Rift runs into the trench from the south. The relief from the bottom of the rift to the hill on the top left is 6,500 meters, or 21,000 feet over a distance of 15 miles, a much steeper cliff than you will encounter in the Himalayas or any other mountain ranges. This is a view of the entire rift system that separates Puerto Rico on the left from the Dominican Republic on the right. We climb from the lower Mona Rift over a sill and down into the upper Mona Rift back toward Puerto Rico. Both rift basins continue to deepen because of frequent earthquakes on the walls of the basins. An earthquake in 1918 in this rift drove a tsunami wave up the canyon which turns to the left and to the coast of Puerto Rico. This produced waves up to five meters or 17 feet high in the coast, causing extensive damage. 110 people were killed by the combined earthquake and tsunami. <laughs> 